we're being given a tour. The message? These are schools, not prisons. But the more we ask, have you been convicted of a crime? How often are you able to pray here? The more evidence we try to gather of our own, the more questions there are. As hundreds of thousands of Muslims disappear into giant secure facilities, China has begun taking a few selected journalists inside. This is what it wants the world to see. Offered up as proof that these are not prisoners, but students. Willingly being guided away from extremism. Is it your choice to be here? Uh, Always in the background, government officials watch over every interview. And this is how thoughts are transformed. Long hours of rote learning Chinese. The study of China's tightening restrictions on religion. And the replacing of faith and cultural identity with a different loyalty. I love the Communist Party of China, this man has written. These are places where adults wear uniforms and where they don't go home at the end of the day but sleep up to ten a room, sharing a toilet with no idea how many months or years it will be before they can return to their families. If they don't want to come, then what happens? It doesn't a place where people have to come obey the rules, stay until you allow them to leave, sound more like a prison, even if it's a prison in which you can do some art. I think, it, I think a, a definition of a prison isn't about what happens inside, it's whether you, it's whether you can leave it not. In one building, we find some graffiti. Oh, my heart, don't break, it says. We've distorted the image to protect whoever wrote it. Over the past few years, a vast network of high-security facilities has been built across China's western region of Xinjiang, surrounded by high walls, barbed wire and watchtowers. But in some of the places we're being taken to, the satellite images show that the internal security fencing and what look like watchtowers were taken down shortly before the tours for journalists began. And empty exercise yards have been transformed into sports facilities. Hey! On full display when we visit. But if these are show camps, what might that say about the places we are not given access to? With their watchtowers and barbed wire still in place, they look much less like schools. And we're much less welcome. 
Xinjiang has experienced outbreaks of separatist violence. But now it seems Islam itself is under suspicion. And the Uyghurs, the Kazakhs and other Muslim minorities are being swept up for the mildest of beliefs and behaviours. Rakim Asenbe spent over a year in the Chinese camp system just for having WhatsApp on her phone. She was released in December and now lives in Kazakhstan. When you see the pictures that China is showing the world of uh, happy Muslims studying hard, dancing even inside these facilities that they call schools, uh, what do you think? What, one wonders, might these people have been told by the officials ahead of our visit? Then they switch from Uyghur, their mother tongue, to Chinese lyrics, written by President Xi Jinping. They've been convicted of no crime, faced no trial. But we're told China now believes it can determine their guilt in advance. Pre-criminals, in need, we're told of job training. How long does it take to learn how to make a bed? Just to learn to make the bed, four months? We would call that brainwashing. We are told that people are given some time off. One night's home leave each week, taken in groups on different days. Later, we find ourselves at the school gate at exactly the right time. One final question. I, I'm wondering why we don't see any students leaving uh, or even preparing to leave. So in the, in the next few minutes they will leave. I mean, that seems a little odd. I mean, when we spoke earlier, you said that people left every day. 
our government minders call the principal over.